several years ago, I used to coach softball here. My dad was a manager, my sister was a player, and I volunteered to be a coach. Anyone who's ever played community sports would know that before you got on a team, you had to go through tryouts. And it would be during tryouts where the coaches and the managers would observe the players and make their choices in a predetermined order. Generally, you would want to pick the most skilled and competent players. That way you would have a competitive team going into the next season. However, that was not our approach. In fact, we would pick the players who maybe were not all that great, but had the most to learn. I played baseball throughout all my childhood and well into high school. I've been on losing teams and I've been on championship winning teams. But some of my favorite teams were when I had coaches who would come alongside me to teach me, to help me learn the techniques, would show me my mistakes, who would cheer me on and give me a chance. In the first week in the book of Mark, we went over the introduction of John the Baptist and why he was baptizing in the Jordan River. We also looked into Jesus' baptism and his testing in the wilderness. John was then arrested and Jesus would begin his ministry. We also pinpointed the central theme to Jesus' message and his mission and it all revolved around the kingdom of God. And that's what brings us to this part of the story. As Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. When they had gone just a little farther, he saw James son of Zebedee and his brother John in a boat, preparing their nets. Without delay he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. In the early days of Jesus' ministry, he put together a team, a band of disciples who would come alongside him as he went about his ministry and his journey. Now, these were not the most skilled or competent men when it came to matters of the scriptures. That belonged to the scribes and the teachers of the religious law. These were just ordinary people who would wake up, go to work to take care of their family. Now, even though they weren't top tier, they did have the most to learn from Jesus' coaching. Let me ask you this question. If some random unknown person were to come up to you and say, follow me, would you do it? Of course not. That would be foolish. However, Jesus was not some random unknown person at this time. In fact, he has made quite a name for himself being an incredible teacher and speaker of the scriptures. And it was considered a great honor to be asked to be a disciple of a renowned rabbi. These men, they were fishermen by trade. And Jesus was making them into fishermen of men. And what does that mean? Well, it's simple. Just as fishermen would go out and try to catch as many fish as possible to bring back to the marketplace, Jesus was making these men go out to bring as many people back into God's family. And it's the same story today. God wants you to be a part of his family. And there will be people in the future who will come to know God because of you. By the end of this season, even though we did not win it in the playoffs, coaching these girls was probably one of my most one of the most memorable experiences of my life. I remember the last couple games sitting in the dugout and comparing how these girls were when they first started with us and where they were at that point. And not only did they become more competent players in the game of softball, they became more confident in who they are. They became different players and they became different people. See, God is working on you. 
and he will continue to work on you. And he wants you to give, he wants to not only make you a part of his family, but he's inviting you to participate in something far bigger and far greater than yourself.